He turns 40 today. Nick Wright turns 40 today. How about a round of happy birthday for Nick Wright? Happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy birthday! birthday. Happy, happy birthday! birthday. Happy, birthday. Happy, birthday. Happy, birthday. Happy, birthday. happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Nick! Thank you. You know, I didn't know what it would take to be invited back on the show for the first time in months, mm -hmm. maybe more than a year. I'm not sure at this point, but it took me, you know, becoming an old man like you. So that you you, you <laughs> were, you know, you were sick of, sick of talking to this young up and comer. And now that I'm just old and washed, it's fine. I get it. Well, you tell me that you prefer to go on Colin Cowherd's show. That's and so, you see, and this so is that's a why. Weird thing have you, you do. invited me I, on your show on Fox Sports One? Open invite. We, but no, that that's yeah. not that's yeah. not an Come, invite. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow. What you what, coming? What time do I have to be there? Well, tomorrow's usually our show's three to five Eastern. Tomorrow it's three to four thirty because playoff baseball okay. something uh, takes it. Anytime you want. What time do you want to come on? Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to get back uh, to you because okay. I'd have to travel into the city. Okay. Well, listen, I, this is sincere. If you would like to come on the show, yeah. we, I bet we can send a car. If tomorrow doesn't work, we'll make it happen. Yeah. So I, the, but it's a different format of shows. I kind of had also, to invite myself. I had to invite myself. You didn't have to invite yourself. I just don't know how good your Cowboys takes are. <laughs> and that's a. <laughs> that's a are you talking? Uh, you guys even talk about Oklahoma State Cowboys. I mean, the, any chance to get in Cowboys, uh, Cowboys. Wyoming, Wyoming Did, Cowboys. Uh, we just need it on the lower third. <laughs> yes. As long as it says Cowboys, we can really see. That's the thing. You think we're always talking Dallas Cowboys, but that's because our show is probably on where you're at without the sound. You're just seeing it. So you think we're talking Cowboys. We're actually talking about the racial politics of the WNBA. We just have Dak Prescott in the lower <laughs> third in the corner. Well, I that's mentioned that doing. if shows could somehow work the Lakers into Devontae Adams that and Caitlin Clark, that they would somehow yeah. try to do that. Listen, man, it's a business. I know. You're the, we're out here. We're out here talking. You know, trying to capture the zeitgeist. If you <laughs> want to spend, I don't know how much time you're spending tonight on uh, the, the Falcons tonight. What is it? Falcons Bucks tonight? Yeah. Like uh, you know, Kirk Cousins. How you know did how how much better has he looked in Week Four from Week One on the Achilles? You can do that. We're you know. We've carved out 90 seconds for that on today's show, but I don't know if you've heard, it, Tyree Kill's flirting with the Chiefs again, so that's probably going to be discussed on my on my television show. And the Royals are going to beat the Yankees, which is going to be terrible for me professionally, but great for me personally. Okay. Um, the I think Baker Mayfield is an interesting storyline because... I agree. We're, 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 we got a larger sample size. If I go back to last year, so 21 games... His stats are second best to Dak Prescott. If I look at yeah. touchdowns, interception, like he, I think he's gotten to the point where we have to recognize him as he's a, is he a very good quarterback? But he's, I mean, he's certainly a good quarterback. He's definitively a good quarterback. And you, you did larger sample. If you go to like week 12 of last year and now, which is including the playoffs, maybe week 13, it's like 10 games. It's elite numbers, like truly elite numbers across the board, rating, yards, all of it. He also has going for him this. The guy's played four career playoff games, has gone for 300 plus or had awesome games in three of them, even though they did lose to, you know, one of those ones that he was awesome in. And his story kind of makes sense to me. Awesome college player, comes into Cleveland, is instantly good has maybe a rough sophomore season, then is awesome again. And then his last year in Cleveland, week one, tears his labrum in his showing, throwing arm and is really bad the rest of that year. And people were very quick to kind of throw him out. Obviously, he wasn't great and he wasn't even good in Carolina. Seems like nobody is. And now in Tampa, has had a chance to be rejuvenated a bit. He also has learned, in my opinion... His biggest weakness early in his career was it felt like he thought he was faster than he was. Like it felt like he thought he was a better athlete than he actually was. And so he would try to escape and get run down. I also think there is a 
We're seeing it with a with Baker. I don't really believe in Darnold, but maybe with Darnold. We've seen it in other instances. The Geno Smith is a great example. The veteran quarterback who gets the experience of being in the league five, eight, ten years, but isn't thought of highly. So he's not paid highly. So you get like the rook, not the rookie contract, but you get a cheap quarterback, but with all this experience, so you can then have a bunch of great weapons around him. That thus far this season has been a very effective through line for teams. Yeah. And Sam Darnold, I still maintain that there has to be a, a landing spot that makes sense for both team and player. And Baker signed that deal. Yes. I mean, 30, 35 million. That's that's a nice if uh, Mitch Trubisky should have taken that deal when he was in Pittsburgh because now or Chicago, he might still be their quarterback if he had had a it felt like, hey, you're next up. So you got to get, you know, 45, 50 million. Not everybody deserves 50 million, 60 million. And so that's listen, you know, I'm a big Trevor Lawrence guy. He's been brutal this year. The team's been bad. And that contract is going to be an albatross. I was worried Tua's contract was going to be an albatross. There is there are some weird things happening with the NFL salary structure where, so listen, I know it's a passing league. Obviously it is. But it is, it's weird that the market, someone had a tweet about this. I think it was Mina and she's right. The market told us that Alan Lazard brings as much value to a team as Derrick Henry and no one bats an eye. Like, that's not correct. You know what I mean? Like, Derrick Henry gets $10 million a year and people are like, oh man, that's a lot for a wide receiver. <laughs> Christian Kirk gets 14 All right, a lot for running back. Christian Kirk gets 14 and nobody cares. So there is, that has touched the quarterback position as well, which is Mahomes is worth 100 a year. Josh Allen is worth 60 a year. Lamar is worth 50 a year. I'm not sure where Dak is, but that next Joe Burrow's worth 50 a year. But that next group of guys is not and but it's just where the market has moved to. He's Nick Wright. He turns 40 today. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Let's go 40. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Many yeah. more. Yeah. Um I was wondering about it, the, with this uh yeah, you were going to say I was just because just you mentioned my age. Is the only person on your staff younger than me, Marvin? Yeah, you guys are pretty close. I turned 40 in April. Oh. Yep, so I'm a little so bit I'd older So I'd be the you. youngest. I'm, I'm the youngest person in your in your kind of, you know, area. Yeah. In your team. Yeah. If I'm on the team. Yeah. say I'm on the team. Yeah. I mean, you're invited uh, to come in to the studio. I got a basketball hoop. We got meet Friday tomorrow. I mean... A lot of things oh. going on. Okay. Well, okay. I will. You know what? I'm going to invite we'll you to the man cave. Yeah, we'll do that. a home at home. <laughs> yeah, that'll be great. That'll, it'll be a Syracuse Dayton home at home. I can't wait for it. That is awesome. I was yeah. wondering about this with Andy Reid since I knew we were going to have you on. Andy Reid's genius to me is if you look at the Chiefs game winning touchdowns in the playoff Super Bowl, it's not the stars. Correct. That's yeah. that's the brilliance of and you do Sky Moore, uh, McCall Hardman. Hardman. Like that to me is the brilliance of Andy Reid, uh, Pacheco. Like it's not the guys that you think are going to score these touchdowns, but his ability to find those guys and use them in the right moment at the right you know the right time. Well, and it's also so, and we can kind of go you know I can go a step further with it. Uh, the Game ceiling play in the AFC Championship game was a bomb to MVS, who had dropped that ball yeah. mo all year long. Yeah. The uh, um, they finally had to give up on Kadarius Tony, but Tony they gave chance after chance after chance. McCole Hardman, like right now, the Chiefs running back and wide receiver room because of injury. Here are the guys: Kareem Hunt. Cleveland said, we can't use you. Cleveland's no good. Uh, Samaji Pirine, waived by the Broncos. They stink. And Carson Steele, whose NFL prospects were so grim when he was at UCLA that his sister scheduled her wedding for a Saturday, uh, for a Sunday in the fall in September, knowing he was draft eligible. So his own family didn't believe in him. The receivers are a rookie who I think is going to be good. 
But Juju, who the Patriots said, we can't use you. McCole Hardman, who the Jets said, we can't use you. And Justin Watson, who went to Penn. And all year long, what the Chiefs, they have the, they, they have the benefit of having this great young defense and Mahomes, who hasn't played great this year. And because of that, they can all year long get these guys reps and opportunities and and involved in regular season games as opposed to we are just going to rely on our stars. And then in the playoffs, if someone can take one of those stars away, these guys have no experience with it. I think Andy is I, I the people keep asking me, what would it take for me to worry about the Chiefs? And even though they're four and oh, and they asked it last year, and the answer is as long as they have Andy, Patrick, and the most underrated player in the sport, Chris Jones, they are in better position than any other team week after week after week. Yeah, I agree. Before I let you go, uh, the, the Knicks took a big swing here with Carl yeah. Anthony Towns. It's, I, I don't know where I land on this right now. Um, I'm not a Julius Randle fan. Ball ends up in his hands and it stays there. DiVincenzo, a lot of threes. Uh, Yeah, the Villanova connection. I just, I don't know Carl Anthony Towns if, like, he's the Joel Embiid answer. Yeah. I don't, I, this was the, I don't want to call it a lose lose trade, but I don't know who won. And I'm a little confused by it. Minnesota's side of things. I just thought you could have gotten more for Carl Anthony Towns. And I don't love him, but it is, it, he is a good to very good player. He's an excellent offensive player. And the contract's, you know, a tough. But I don't think Julius Randle is helpful when it comes to winning a championship. And Minnesota just came off the best year they've had in the history of their franchise, or second best year, and they totally shake the snow globe. The Knicks, on the other hand, I thought made their big move with Mikhail Bridges. This tr- I would have wanted to see what it looks like with this group before I then take this swing as well. Now I I understand why the Knicks. It's like we gave up Randall, who didn't seem to want to be here. Only one pick and Dante, and we got the best player in the trade. I don't think it's a bad move for the Knicks, but it's a confusing one. I agree with you entirely that it's like. It just didn't, it seemed rushed when they didn't need to do it. And I thought they would want to see what the Villanova crew looks like together, plus OG and Randall, before they make this drastic of a move. I'll say one other thing that this signaled to me out West. The Timberwolves, right or wrong, no longer feel like, oh, we have to build our team with Denver first and foremost in mind. Like the 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 Carl Anthony Downs Rudy Gobert combo was a really good combo to get through the Nuggets to go off that. To me, they're saying we don't look at Denver as this ultimate alpha that, you know, that we have to build, you know, in relation to. Yeah, and we see this a lot of times. Teams are building their team because there's there's a championship team yep. that they know they have to go through. Uh, the LeBron James comments, and I'm paraphrasing, like don't yeah. have expectations on our season. So I I think those comments were I, I somewhat misinterpreted. I think the more interesting comments he made were, I have nothing left to prove, which is LeBron, I think, trying to set the conversation of, I don't care what you guys think. I think the GOAT debate's over. And when he said it's all extra credit, he is he is making it clear to everyone. Again, people can disagree with him that um, I'm the greatest player ever. That's that part's done. So everything else I do from here is just to see how far I can take it. And I know that'll make people mad. I know people will argue. But I I happen to think not only do I agree with LeBron on the merits, I also agree with his sentiment, which is you know, it's election season. There aren't any undecided voters left in this thing. And even if the Lakers won the title this year, the Jordan folks would be like, oh, when was five better than six? And even if they won it this year and next year, they would be like, okay, so it's six to six, but Jordan's got more MVPs and never lost in the finals. Those people are not reachable. I'm not going to call them deplorables, but they're somewhere in that vicinity. And so I just don't, I think LeBron is saying, look at the record books. 
every youngest ever record, it says my name. And now every oldest ever record, it says my name. And so I think that's why he said that. And as far as the expectations, I just think he was saying it's a blank canvas. Well, it's almost like when Jordan went to the Wizards. And, and I, you know, I don't know if there was this, oh, my God, he's got to live up to Air Jordan. I think we were just happy that he came back and he was playing. I don't remember expectation levels were like, oh, what a disappointment. It was, no, hey, we get a chance to see Mike play a little bit more. It's totally true. Now, I mean, I think some people when Jordan went to the Wizards were like, maybe this is the year he can prove he can play 500 basketball without Scottie Pippen. And of course, he couldn't, <laughs> but that's, that's five seasons okay. without Pippen. Can you zero, say, zero. can you say this? One is a, has had a better career. One is a better player. With, I, I mean, with I, I understand LeBron. the concept of what you're saying, but the problem is you want me to say the guy that was a better player is the guy who is smaller, not as athletic, and a worse shooter. So no, I can't say that. I think I agree with the idea that you could you, you could say like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. You know what I mean? One guy at his peak was better, but the other guy clearly had a better career. I just think LeBron's career is unimpeachably better. And I think Apex versus Apex, LeBron was the better player. And so mm. I get the idea of it. I just don't subscribe to the thinking of it. Well, it's like Aaron Rodgers is supposed to be the most talented quarterback to ever play the position, but Tom Brady is more decorated. Yeah. I No, I, it, it, it exists across sports. Yeah. Luckily in basketball, the most talented best is also the one who had the best career. We're really fortunate in that space. Like, yeah. So I just, I just disagree with it on its merits. But again, th this is a great, if you don't want to, if you don't have a hot Cowboys take when you come on first things first, we can do this for sure. <laughs> we can, we don't do it. Listen, the LeBron Jordan debate, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's like a pumpkin spice latte. You don't want it every day. But a couple times a year, it hits the spot. You just want to you want to mix it in. Once again, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's a sweet butterscotch. Yeah. Uh, mocha. Uh, hey, happy birthday. And uh, Thanks. we'll talk soon. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. See That's you uh, Nick Wright. Great show in the afternoon on Fox Sports 1. <laughs> it's his birthday today. Turns 40.